And we are back. All right, so we've had a look at how to attack. Now we're going to have a look at the primary form of defense, which is parrying. So there are other forms of defense. Obviously, there are counter cuts. You can also slip. You can defend basically purely with this Just get out of the way. Uh, but the best and most reliable form of defense is um, to parry. So from my medium guard, um, starting, we're going to start with the, the first parry, which is also parry of Tears. Um, there's a point in British fencing where the numbering system they use for parry specifically uh, changes to the, the numbering system of French foil. Um, in the early 19th century, the parries are numbered with the cuts they parry, so cut one, parry to parry one, cut two, parry to parry two. Um, so on. Then you get, then when you get to late 19th century, they use French numbers, which just don't correlate to the cuts at all. And until I looked at French foil, I didn't know, I couldn't work out how these two cut, these two numbering systems related. Because the British keep, they keep the same, uh, the same numbering of cuts. The light would be. All right. So the tears parry is fairly simple. All I do is I turn my hand over to the, basically the same angle as part two. So this is cut number two, cut my hand at the same angle, I bring my tip up, and I bring my hand over so it's in line with some basic my thumb, in line with the outer edge of the body. So I'm not parrying way over here, because I'm allowed to keep my parry and be to loosely. I'm parrying just here. Um, my tip, the tip of my sword is either on the center line, if I've got a very short weapon, or if I've got a slightly longer weapon, this, the sword is just long enough, it can actually sit um, across the blade can sit across the center line for a problem. And I perform the parry. I just go back. Um, and you want to do each of those movements together. So um, all I do is turn my hand over, um, move it to the side of my body, and tip up, and that's the tears parry. Tears parry. Alright. So I'll get you to start following on. Um, we're just going to go from tears parry to guard. Um, so I'm going to pull out. So tears. Guard, tears. Back to 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 guard, and tears. Guard. Uh, you notice the difference between the parry and the guard? Uh, the tears guard is here, tears parry is here, it's just higher. So when I'm parrying, I am doing, I am purely defending. Um, so I let my tip drift up, um, to make sure my opponent doesn't skip over it. When I'm in guard, I want to keep my tip down so I can trust, even though this guard is kind of closing off that line of attack. Um, this is the same for every parry. The next parry, which is cut, you can have the cut parry or the cut guard. Um, and something you can experiment with if you're able to bat with this in isolation is fencing out of those different guards to see which one you like. Let's move on. So, as I mentioned before, the next um, parry is cut. All I do for that is to turn my hand over to um, basically the same hand position as cut number one. I bring my hand over to um, so my thumb is aligned with the other edge of the body, and I bring my tip up so that my hand is kind of filled. Um, and you want, if you've got a short weapon, like a um, shorter cutlass, you want your tip on the center line. If you've got a longer weapon, where well, you can get away with this a bit, you actually want your tip. You know, tipping line with the other edge of your body so that your sword is in the cup. So, again, what I do is turn my hand over, bring my tip up, and move my hand to in line with um, this edge of my body. Let's get you to follow along. So, cart. Back to guard, cart. Back to guard, cart. Back to guard, cart. Back to guard, cart. Back to guard. And something very important. When I'm doing these positions, I'm moving from my elbow. Um, I don't want to let my elbow drift into my body because that will collapse my shoulder and mean that my whole uh, my whole structure will collapse when I'm too high. Um, so if you ever do wrestling, um, when your arm um, grip fighting for someone, for someone, if you can get their elbow inside the line of the body, so if you can get their elbow into here, you can collapse you can take all the strength out of their shoulder and start throwing them around. Um, yeah. 
like one or two wrestling tricks I know when I wrestle. All right. So, card, guard, card, guard, card, guard, card, guard, card, guard, and card. Yeah. Uh, something you can do if you're practicing on your own is get a mirror. Um, I just use windows. I've got some nice falling windows here. And I just practice moving to the position with, uh, and making sure the sword is in line with the edge of my body. I don't want to over parry. Because if you over parry, you're very, very vulnerable to feints, to uh, fast reposts, to really any attack. I only want to keep my sword in line with the outside of my body. Uh, and this is doubly important if you're ever in group combat, because in group combat, you know, and you have to defend a 3D space, you don't want to parry too far um, and have someone then hit you from like all the way over here. You want to keep your parries nice and tight, and if you need to cover, even retract them a little bit um, so that you don't expose yourself to being attacked. Right. Let's move on and look at uh, the next parry, which is 17. So, all I do for the is to cut this is to stop the rising cut, so um, cut number three. Um, all I do is I draw a little circle on the tip, my hand over like this. Um, I turn my hand over so my palm is facing out, my tip is down. And I bring my hand over so it's in line with, again, um, this edge of my body, side of my body. Um, I think a really easy way to think of this is if this is your cut number three, your parry of 17 is that, but retracted. So, um, and that's actually, I think that's true for most people. Parry is a cut is just a, is just basically parrying forward. At your opponent. Um, something else that's important with this is I draw a little circle, I actually circle my tip out. I don't want to drop directly down because I can, that could cause me to miss my opponent sort of by this time. So, so I practice a little bit. Set team, and back to guard. 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 Set team. Back to guard, set team, and back to guard. So we're now going to move on to the parry on Um So all I did that is I turn my hand over. Um, basically, if you think of the team is basically being contracted. Uh, second is cut number four, but a little bit to the side. Still quite extended. So all I do is I draw a little circle with the hook. Half circle of the tip to make sure that my feet are on the body. I put my tip down so that it's sitting at quite a low angle. Um, when you do the guard of set team, the tip is more forward. When you're doing the parry, the tip is more down. And I want to make sure that my hand and my tip are in line with the outside edge of my body. Stop the right hand. So, set right team. Set team. Set team. Set two, and one more block. All right, so we've now got four parries that will cover pretty much most things. So you, know, you can carry your high outside, cover your high outside line with your TS. You can cover your high inside line with your heart. You can cover your low inside line with set two. And you can cover your low outside with um, support. But let's look at just modifying those slightly, or primarily mo modifying um, the guards of tears apart. Um, so when I'm parrying, I don't want to—I um, don't want to ever let my arm get um, smaller than nine degrees. The reason being is if I get to sort of this angle, this is just under nine degrees. Any force that comes in directly, like say a cart that's clashing to my guard, will exert force on my elbow and collapse it in and cause me to soft my hit myself with my own sword as I get hit with my opponent's sword. So I want to keep my um, extended on my guard more than 90 degrees. So anything that comes in is going to push my arm down. If my arm goes down and pushes my opponent's sword down, that's actually great for me because it gives me a better angle for fault. So let's say for the sake of argument, I want to lift my I want to do my parry of tears but higher. So you know, I want to do it up here. I don't want to track my arm. What I want to do is move from the shoulder. Tears, do a high tier scar, or a fan fan with a cart, and the cart parry, and lift from the shoulder. That's high cut scar. And basically, this is how I move the sword up and down. It moves from the 
shoulder. So we should practice that. So go to a chest guard form and now move up to the shoulder to height. Feel free to extend your sword, flatten sword over the top. Yeah. Okay. Tears, high tears. Guard. Tears, high tears. Guard. And the other thing you can do is just hold it straight away. Tears, high tears. Alright, and now we will try going straight to high tears. So, high tears, back guard. High tears, back guard. High tears and back guard, and high tears and back guard. Okay, right, now I've got a challenge for you. I'm going to do the same thing with cart, um, where I go to where I go to high cart. So the position of cart, but high, right the shoulder. But we're not going to take we're not going to take that step. I want you to take the same kind of movement idea to um, learn how to go straight to high tears, to go straight to high cart. So keeping your arm, um, um, you know, making sure your arm is more than 90, or your elbow is uh, more than 90 degrees. So high cart, and back to guard. 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 And high cart, and back to guard. So you can sort of see that movement principle. If I want to raise my sword, um, from either of these positions, I want to bend from the shoulder. I don't want to just contract my arm because I get the sword into my face. Let's say I want to go down though. So let's say I want to parry with a low cart. You know, it's going to my belly. I don't really have time to do a full technique parry. What I want to do, I can't use my shoulder. I can't use my shoulder itself. Hand back. Now I need to open my elbow up. So I'm in cart. I want to get to low cart. I just open up my elbow. So let's practice this a few times. Cart, open the elbow, low cart. Back to guard. Cart, open the elbow to low cart, and back to guard. Cart, low cart, 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 and guard. Right. So you can see if I want to go down, if I'm basically, if I want to go down, I want to extend my elbow out, and then I can come back up. Once I get to just a bit over 90 degrees, I want to stop my shoulder. Um, so let's see if we can do low tiers. And again, we're not going to go through that middle step of going from tiers to low tiers. We're just going to go straight from a medium guard to low tiers. Um, so that you really kind of get your head, head around that kind of that principle of, you know, to go down, I want to open my elbow up. So, that's right. Low tears. Back guard. 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 Low tears. And back guard. Right. So normally when I do those kinds of Hey, can you throw together like two different things you learn without needing to explicitly explain how things? Uh, if everyone does it, I buy a jug of beer, but um, unfortunately, none of us are not meeting in person, so um, you can't really shout your beer, um, or at least not until we can meet in person. And then if you want to come to um, our regular class or meet up at the convention, then yeah, I guess I'll, I'll be shouting a lot of people beers. But anyway, those are just you know some of the basic parries, and certainly enough to get your fight in. Um, so before we move on though, are there any questions? Take that as a moment.